Welcome back to the ProLoworks channel. My name is John and this is the Scorpion 16 inch joiner planer from CWI Woodworking Technologies. They're a company out of Winnipeg, Canada. Today I'm going to be giving you guys an overview and review of the machine. I've had it for a few months now and I feel comfortable enough to tell you what I think about it. This is going to be an honest review and these are going to be my thoughts and my thoughts only. Uh, though I will have some sponsored videos with CWI in the future. So let's get started. For me, the biggest selling point to this machine is the simple fact that it is a 16 inch joiner. I know that may seem obvious, but there are a lot of other perks to this machine that I'll go over, but that still remains the biggest one for me. Having a joining capacity that wide is a huge luxury and will save me a lot of time down the road because I'll have to do less panel glue ups. Panel glue ups are a huge part of most of my projects. As an example, when I built my dining room table, the tabletop is obviously a huge panel and it was 36 inches wide. I used six six inch wide boards and if I would have had this machine, I would have just used three 12 inch wide boards. Also, I think using wider boards will give a nice clean look overall compared to using more narrow boards. If you've had a joiner of any size, I'm sure you've run into the issue of having material that is slightly too wide for your machine. I always ran into an issue of having six and a half, seven inch, eight inch wide material for my six inch benchtop joiner. And what I would have to do is either plan ahead and rip down to a rough width for most of my parts, or just rip the board down to six inches and waste some material. That wastes money and time in the long run. And if you've had a eight, 10, 12 inch joiner, I'm sure you've run into the same issues. If I run into that issue with this machine, I'll be happy to live with it. I'll go ahead and move the cutter guard out of the way so that we can see the cutter head. This cutter head is called the Stinger Carbide Cutter Head and it has five rows of 16 carbide cutters for a total of 80 cutters, which in my opinion is a lot compared to some of the other machines I've seen on the market. I think the benefits of this style cutter head are well documented, but I'll just add that with this many cutters, none of them follow the same exact path, which helps yield a smoother finish. The cutters are radius and cut at a sheer angle, which helps reduce tear out. In addition, the manufacturer also included 10 additional cutters, a screwdriver to install them, and some extra screws, which I think is a nice perk. The cutter guard is a Euro style cutter guard, which has taken me a little bit of time to get used to because of muscle memory. I'm used to the traditional pork chop style, but in the end, I think this one is a little bit safer. I think they each have their own pros and cons, but in the end, I think I'll be more comfortable with this one in the long run. You can see here that this has a quick release so that you can move the cutter guard out of the way for certain operations that might require it. And I'll bring you in a little bit closer to show you how the rest of it works. For a simple face joining operation, all you need to do is turn this knob to raise the cutter guard the correct height so that your material can pass underneath. From there, you'll pass your material underneath, running your hands over the guard and maintaining pressure on the outfeed table. This is what took me a little bit of time to get used to, was maintaining that pressure while I was running my hands over the cutter guard. I'm used to the traditional pork chop style where I'm running with push blocks right over the cutter head and keeping contact with the material the whole time. Like I said, I think each has their own pros and cons, but in the end, I think this one is a little bit more safe. I've also noticed that I've been running most of my face joining operations towards this side of the cutter head, and then when I'm planing, I'll run the pieces through this side just so that I wear out the cutters evenly. I don't know how much of an impact that has, but I'm sure it does not hurt. For edge joining operations, I like to lower the cutter guard back down and then move it out along with bringing the fence closer to me. And that means that I don't have to lean over too far for all of my edge joining, which can be uncomfortable if you have a lot of pieces to do. I know that's a good problem to have. I'm not exactly complaining. So I'll go ahead and move the cutter guard out, unlock the fence, and bring it out. From there, I'll move the cutter guard back closer to the fence just so that there's a big enough opening for my material. From there, you can just edge joint like any other joiner. And one thing I've noticed is that this fence has maintained square through every operation that I put it through, whether that's moving the fence back and forth or opening the joiner up and down for planar mode. This fence is a piece of extruded aluminum, which is pretty common for most of these Euro style machines. I think that in the United States, we're used to beefy cast iron fences, which 
are usually equated with accuracy and flatness, but I have had no problems with this fence so far and have been pretty happy with it. To move the fence, you just unlock these two knobs and you can move it back and forth pretty simply. And through those operations, it maintains square very reliably, which is a huge plus in my opinion. You can also adjust the fence to 45 degrees just by unlocking these two knobs and shifting it back and forth. It's not something I usually take advantage of with a joiner, but it is something that is a possibility. Raising and lowering the infeed table is pretty simple. You just need to unlock this handle and then raise and lower the bed accordingly. To be honest, I don't like to take too much material off with my passes at the joiner because you can easily waste material. Especially on wider boards, it's pretty expensive and can go quickly. So I've usually kept it no deeper than one millimeter and I've had no issue with that. When I get to wider material, I'll move this up to a half millimeter or even shallower just because I don't want to waste material like I said and it's a little bit easier to move a wider board over the full width of the cutter head when you're not taking as much material. The next biggest perk after being a 16 inch wide joiner is the fact that this is a combination machine, which means that in my small shop, I can have a 16 inch wide joiner and 16 inch wide thickness planer in the same footprint. Combination machines are also pretty beneficial because you can typically save money versus buying two separate machines of the same size. It is much cheaper to buy just one 16 inch long cutter head with carbide cutters than it is to buy two of them. Also, I only need to have one extra 220 outlet as well as one for my table saw. If I were to have another planer, I would probably need another outlet or have to switch the plugs back and forth. Some of the knocks on combination machines are the fact that the joiner beds are not as long as a standalone joiner would be. I haven't run into any issues with the length of the joiner beds yet, though I've only run six to seven foot long boards on this machine. The other knock is that it can be quite tedious or cumbersome for some machines to transfer from joiner to planer and back from planer to joiner. I'll show you right now in real time, or maybe I'll speed it up, but I'll tell you how long it takes me to transfer from joiner to planer. I'll get this clock started now. All right, so that was about 30 seconds, and it is usually quicker to go back to joiner because lowering the bed does not take as much force, which, you know, 30 seconds or 20 seconds, it's not that big of a deal. If this were to take, say, a minute, two minutes, I think that it would be a much bigger deal breaker for me. Here's a look at the infeed side of the planer. There's a few things here of note. We have a large adjustment wheel which raises and lowers the planer bed. We also have a locking handle here, which locks the planer bed into place, which is a good thing to use between adjustments. And then we also have a lever here, which engages and disengages the feed rollers. You wanna engage the feed rollers for planing and then disengage them when you go back to joiner mode. This machine comes standard with a digital readout, but it also comes with this analog dial that's attached to the adjustment wheel, and it tells me the height of the planer bed. It adjusts up and down, just as the bed does. And it is in millimeters, which is not super convenient for someone like me, but it has taught me to convert from inches to millimeters pretty quickly now. This machine is newly redesigned by CWI this year, and one of the new features is a flush electrical panel here with only slight protrusions by the on and off buttons and the emergency stop button. Typically, you'll see some of these boxes that stick out a few inches and can be annoying and get in the way when you are working on the machine. Another of the features is a standard digital readout, and this tells me the height and movement of the planer bed. One of the ways I like to use this is to zero it off and then take incremental changes on the wheel if I want to sneak up on a fit like something for a dado. So I can zero it off, and then here I can turn the wheel 29 thousandths of an inch, and you can also see here that it tells me that that is 1 32nd of an inch. And another feature is that I can switch between inches and millimeters. 
A critical part of most any woodworking tool is how well you can remove dust and chips from it. CWI recommends a two horsepower dust collector and ideally a three horsepower one. I have a two horsepower dust collector from Harbor Freight and it's okay for what it is as far as the price is concerned. And in joiner mode, I've had no issues with chips being sucked out of this thing. It pretty much collects everything. When I'm taking full width passes in the planer mode, I have noticed some of the chips getting shot out the infeed side, which is not the biggest deal and it hasn't affected the finish on the board, but nonetheless, it is a small annoyance. The port here is between four to five inches and I think it's in metric, so that's why we have such an odd size for somebody that's not using metric. I was able to slip on this four inch rubber plumbing coupling and that has solved any issue I had with it. I know one of the common questions people ask about combination machines is whether you have to disconnect your dust collection hose when switching over from joiner to planer and likewise from planer to joiner. I would say that the answer is yes and no and in this case, at least for this machine, for shorter operations I can get away with just leaving the hose attached and then flipping this up into planer mode. The hose is sort of in the way, but for just a few pieces to plane down to thickness, it's not that big of a deal. For longer operations where I'll be at the planer for 20, 30, 40 minutes, then I'll take the time to bring the hose back around the other side of the garage, and that way I can have it in front of the machine and there aren't as many kinks in the hose, and it'll be out of the way of the outfeed bed. Now that I'm going back to joiner mode, you can see that there are some springs on either side of this bed, and that makes sure that I'm not lifting and lowering the full weight of this bed, it is spring assisted. To lower the bed, all I have to do is lift this little knob here and then bring the bed down. While I talk some more about my thoughts on the machine, here's it in action with some wide cherry boards. So far, I've been very pleased with this machine. Changing over between joiner and planer is very simple. There's no need to remove the fence or cutter guard like some others may require. The carbide cutters leave a super smooth finish that is tear out free. In the case that I'm planning something but need to use the joiner again, I can use the digital readout to zero the machine so that I can come back to the exact same thickness when planing again. The four horsepower motor is plenty strong to handle full width passes in both joiner and planer mode. Some large machines like this don't come with a power cord attached, but luckily this one did. It's noticeably more quiet than my old planer, which is great for someone that works in a garage shop. There wasn't much assembly required when the machine arrived. All I had to do was attach the fence and cutter guard with a few bolts. And as you can see here, the huge cast iron beds make for a great place to hold material. That about wraps this one up. If you guys have any questions that I didn't address, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to address each and every one of them. If you're in the market for a tool like this, I would definitely recommend checking out CWI's website. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Outside of this 16 inch model, they also have a 12 inch model which is pretty much identical and packed with the same great features. I know that 12 inch combination machines are pretty popular in the hobbyist woodworking community because honestly, I was going to purchase one myself before I found this 16 inch model. For me, joining and planning are two of the more fun processes in woodworking, so this was money well spent for me. It makes those processes that much more fun. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and like I said, please leave any more questions in the comments below. I'll see you next time.